on bonds.com. Now, NBC 739 News at 11. A war of words. It was 90 minutes that could help determine who wins the White House. Two presidential nominees face off in their first televised debate. Good evening. I'm Susan Taylor. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marty Levine. The nominees battle it out. The debate dominated by disagreements on Iraq. And we have team coverage tonight. Steve Handelsman of the latest from Miami. Vic Salazar standing by at a San Diego viewing event. We'll start with Steve. Good evening. No cheap shots and no zingers here in Carl Gables tonight. This was a serious debate on how to keep America safe. The start was scripted. The handshake, the greeting from moderator Jim Lehrer, then from podiums 10 feet apart. President Bush and John Kerry tried to show voters their miles apart on Iraq. Bush defended the war. It's hard work. It's incredibly hard. You know why? Because an enemy realizes the stakes. The enemy understands a free Iraq will be a major defeat in their ideology of hatred. They're trying to defeat us, and if we lose our will, we lose. But if we remain strong and resolute, we will defeat this enemy. Carry on Iraq September, and Bush. Then in August. I believe in being strong and resolute and determined. And I will hunt down and kill the terrorists wherever they are. But we also have to be smart, Jim. And smart means not diverting your attention from the real war on terror in Afghanistan against Osama bin Laden and taking it off to Iraq, where the 9-11 Commission confirms there was no connection to 9-11 itself in Saddam Hussein. This first debate drew an estimated TV audience of more than 50 million voters. Mr. Bush spoke directly to them. We're doing everything we can at home, but you better have a president who chases these terrorists down and bring them to justice before they hurt us again. Kerry fired back on Iraq. This president just, I don't know if he sees what's really happening on there. But it's getting worse by the day. Does Kerry's criticism hurt the war effort? I know we're not going to achieve our objective if we send mixed signals to our troops, our friends, the Iraqi citizens. So what I'm trying to do is just talk the truth to the American people and to the world. After 90 minutes, a handshake with no way to tell if their one-on-one -on -one clash altered their close race for the White House. Both candidates quickly left this hall and went to big rallies of their supporters in loud cheering that they're the ones who won here tonight. But in fact, it will be days before the key group of undecided voters can be accurately polled. From Carl Gables, I'm Steve Handelsman, NBC 7 39. Thank you, Steve. Among those watching tonight's debate, a new generation of voters. This will be their first presidential election. Vic Salazar was live at San Diego State, and he's now joins us with their reaction. Vic? Well, Susan, let me say, first of all, our focus here at San Diego State does not represent the entire community. These are voters who are young and very conservative. And tonight they were given special instructions on how to watch the debate. To win the war on terror. In a darkened room, about 200 students watched President Bush and Senator Kerry debate. Among the viewers, Callie Parsons, who turned 18 last year. So I'm able to vote this year, and watching the debate made a really big difference. He seemed confident. He seemed, you know, very aggressive. The students responded to debate techniques taught to them by the school's debate coach. Those types of appeals they might use, language, um, nonverbal communication, delivery style, uh, things like that. Not so much content, more delivery. How, is, how are they getting that message across? Students were also asked to watch with a critical eye. Critical perspective, which says that every message makes sense to somebody. And if you walk into the situation and try to figure out who that message is intended for, you're already ahead of the, the curve because you can sort of start dissecting how they get that message to an audience, and that's important. What is also important to the professors is to involve the young voters. It also builds a wonderful sense of community, and I think builds an interest in politics that is sorely lacking in the American public in general and in young people in particular. People like Callie Parsons, whose final perspective speaks for 99% of the students in this room. Um, my mind was, for the most part, made up before I came into the debate, but it definitely reinforced my decision. Yes, in that room tonight, few minds were changed. As for the debate scorecard, the students and the professors agreed that John Kerry came out ahead, but they say President Bush scored well by sticking to the points that he wanted to emphasize. Reporting live from San Diego State University, I'm Vic Salazar. Back to you. 
Our e-poll question tonight, who do you think won the debate, President Bush or Senator Kerry? Here are the results. Now, earlier tonight, the poll showed Senator Kerry leading by a wide margin. It was uh, 60 to 34 percent earlier tonight. But within the last few minutes, the numbers have evened out. President Bush tied with Senator Kerry with 48 percent each. Meantime, 4 percent say there was no clear winner. The fires from last October are no longer burning, but the controversy over fire prevention is starting to heat up. Governor Schwarzenegger has now vetoed four of the five bills proposed by his own Blue Ribbon Fire Commission. Tony Shin joins us now with more. Marty, one word, disappointment. That's the reaction I've gotten from local fire officials. But the governor says many of the bills had already been addressed by executive orders he issued months ago. The October wildfires caught everyone off guard. Now San Diego Senator Denise Duchaney says she's been caught off guard by Governor Schwarzenegger. Obviously we're disappointed. Um, we certainly believe that um, the governor uh, would follow the recommendations of the Blue Ribbon Commission. The governor has now vetoed four of five bills backed by his own Blue Ribbon Commission on Fire Safety. Senator Duchaney proposed one of the vetoed bills. Her bill would have increased fire staffing statewide during fire season and increased staffing year-round for fire-prone areas like Southern California. But Governor Schwarzenegger says he took care of the staffing problems in May with an executive order. He basically tried to say, I support the concept, but I'd rather keep the power just for myself and not uh, not allow it to be done by statute and through the regular budget process. Fire safety and fire protection must be the number one priority of our government and our state. Firefighter Union Director Johnny Perkins says he's also disappointed by the governor's vetoes. Another bill would have allowed the state to purchase an additional 150 fire engines, but the governor vetoed that because the money would have come from Homeland Security funds. This is not far from over. This is just the beginning. We here in San Diego will not rest until we have all the resources we feel we need to provide the best protection, not only for firefighters and paramedics, but for the people in the city. And fire officials say the governor also vetoed a bill that would have improved the state's initial attack capability. They also say another bill would have improved accountability to local fire agencies. As for the bill that did pass, it requires better fire safety planning in high-risk areas. Marty? Thanks, Tony. The governor also vetoed a bill that would have made it easier for Californians to buy cheaper prescription drugs from Canada, including a website for consumers to shop Canadian pharmacies. Instead, the governor says he's negotiating with pharmaceutical companies to bring price relief to low-income residents. Critics claim he's with big business and against consumers. One of the world's most popular drugs is being recalled tonight because it could be too dangerous to take. Pharmaceutical giant Merck announced it is voluntarily withdrawing Vioxx from pharmacies around the world. Vioxx is an anti-inflammatory drug used to treat arthritis. Last year, more than $2 billion worth of the drug was sold to patients worldwide. Tonight, a new study suggests it could cause heart attack and stroke. Some doctors were shocked. Well, Merck is a, a pretty reliable company. Uh, they're pretty high on the list for reliability, and uh, for this to happen is uh, kind of a shock to me, and uh, I'm sure to my patients. With Vioxx gone, doctors say patients can take Celebrex or Bextra, both made by Pfizer, although scientists say neither had been put through the same strict test as Vioxx. An apartment is in need of some major repairs tonight after a car crashes through it. It happened at the complex in the 3600 block of South Barcelona in Casa de Oro. The highway patrol says the driver crashed through a fence and hit the apartment. No one was hurt. Officers say the driver backed out of the structure and then ran away. One man is dead tonight trying to cross Interstate 8. It happened on westbound 8 near College. CHP says a man crashed his car into the center divider in the eastbound lanes of the 8. He then got out of the car, jumped the divider, tried to run across the westbound lanes. A car hit and killed him. It is unknown why he didn't stay where he was. The CHP has not released any names. Will she enter the race for mayor? Council member Donna Fry announces her decision. Phone calls and interviews with Kobe Bryant. The records from his rape trial will be made public. Reconstructing Memories, a local group helping victims of the San Diego firestorm. Petco Park, is it hitting a home run or a single? Now the first season scores with fans. Plus a real life horror movie, a dangerous snake let loose inside a theater.
Tonight Show 50th anniversary week and Jay's all new with David Spade. All right, come on, be cool. Plus Al Franken and Jay's search for the next Dan Rather. Tell them who you really are. I'm Andy Rooney. Then on Conan, James Spader and SNL's Amy Poehler, all new tonight. And this week, Ben Affleck hosts the season premiere of Saturday Night Live. The myths about renter's insurance. How much coverage should you have or should you have any? Find out what the experts say. Plus, we have analysis of the first presidential debate and stand-up comedian Brad Stein. News in the morning, Friday at 5 a.m. California used to give teachers a tax credit for buying classroom supplies the schools can no longer afford. And last year, that tax credit was taken away. Meanwhile, California lets Indian casinos, an $8 billion monopoly, pay nothing in state taxes. So teachers and children lose while Indian casinos win. I didn't vote for that. Did you? Yes, on 68. You pay your fair share. Why don't they? Cavalia, a magical encounter between horse and man. I started with Walmart 18 years ago as an unloader and receiving. I started in the baby department and I am store manager today. Walmart is a career, it's not just a job. Good quality of life, uh, good educational opportunities for my children. We never imagined that we would be doing what we're doing today. Now, our son John has started at Walmart. He wants to be a pharmacist. No one knows better than we do that he has a bright future. We truly are living the American dream. It's out there, and uh, it's at Walmart. It's back. It's bigger than ever. It's the Toyota 10 event. The biggest SUV clearance in Toyota history is going on now at all 10 San Diego County Toyota dealers. To 750 cash back or 2-9 financing on a new 04 Highlander or a new 4Runner. There's 750 back on a new 04 Sequoia SR5. And even 1,000 back on a new 04 Sequoia Limited. The Toyota 10 event ends soon. See your San Diego County Toyota dealer today. Dozens of children are dead after a very violent day in Baghdad. The worst of the attacks today came when three car bombs went off within minutes of each other. At least 41 people died, including 34 Iraqi children. Ten U.S. soldiers were wounded. Earlier in the day, another suicide car bomber hit outside the Baghdad mayor's office, killing a U.S. soldier and two Iraqi police officers. Tonight, Abu Musab al-Zarqawi claimed responsibility for the attack. He is also linked to al-Qaeda. Meantime, 1,500 U.S. troops launched a major offensive to retake control of the city of Samara. It is the beginning of an effort to regain control of more than a dozen cities. Ten more people are being held hostage in Iraq. Today, Al Jazeera television aired video of three people held at gunpoint. The captors claim they have ten hostages, including six Iraqis, two Lebanese, and two Indonesian women. This is the same group claiming responsibility for kidnapping two French journalists last month. Quite a discovery in Iraq. Computer disks containing information on U.S schools, including the San Diego Unified School District. The FBI says the information came from a U.S. government website. The information was general. It was not specific to any school. The incident has prompted school officials to make some changes to their website, including taking off emergency plans. Still, officials say parents don't have to be worried. There is no imminent danger. We have no credible information of any sort of a terrorist attack in our schools. We're very safe here. If that were to change, we would certainly get that word out. The disc was found on a man in Iraq suspected of being involved in anti-coalition activities. The school district says they learned about the incident last Friday. The race for San Diego mayor is a little more crowded tonight. City Councilwoman Donna Fry says she is running. Fry will join Mayor Dick Murphy and Supervisor Ron Roberts on the ballot as a write-in candidate. This morning, Fry picked up her paperwork from the city clerk's office. She plans to sell her message of honest, open government as a giant step towards solving San Diego's financial crisis. There's a lot of things I'm against, but what I'm for is I'm for the public. I'm for open government. Fry will be walking precincts and canvassing supermarket shoppers this weekend. She needs 200 registered signatures from city voters to turn in her nominating papers. Liberal radio talk show host Al Franken takes his show on the road. And today's stop, San Diego. The Al Franken Show live from the Mandeville Auditorium at the University of California.
return to San Diego. Franken's Air America broadcast came from UCSD's Mandeville Auditorium. It was his first before a live audience. The former Saturday Night Live star mixed comedy and politics and had several guests, including actress Meg Ryan. Franken appears on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno after our newscast. New details in Kobe Bryant's sexual assault case will be released tomorrow. The previously sealed documents may include Bryant's interview with detectives, witness statements, phone records, much more. Bryant's defense dropped its objection to releasing the documents. Attorneys are going over them one last time to try and make sure the accuser's name and other protected information is blacked out. A woman accused of throwing hot oil on her sister is in custody tonight. 20-year-old Amber Jackson was arrested this morning in the South Bay. Police say she was in a stolen van with a parolee at large. They say Jackson threw the oil on her sister Monday, sending her to the hospital with burns on her neck, her arms, and her hip. Human trafficking and sex slavery, a warning tonight about its growing dangers from local and federal officials. This is a video of young girls in a Vista field during the spring of 2003. Investigators on a stakeout witnessed them performing sex acts. They believe some were minors held against their will. Today, officials say at least 10,000 people are working as forced laborers in the United States. A quarter of those people from Mexico. They treat their victims like chattel. They're nothing more than property. And it's, it's despicable what we, the kind of atrocities that we have seen committed against individuals. Authorities say victims smuggled into the country through Mexico think they are headed to a good job and a better life. Instead, they end up as slaves. If you are headed out on the road tonight, here's a warning about a closure. The southbound lanes of Interstate 15 will be closed at Carmel Mountain Road starting in about 15 minutes. They will reopen at 4.30 tomorrow morning. Caltrans crews will be tearing down a portion of the overpass. Uh, a movie theater remains closed because of an unwanted patron. The theater is in Texas, closed about a week ago. Someone reported they saw a snake. Funny you should mention that. The movie Anacondas is playing on one of the screens there. The theater owner says it's going to stay closed till a professional snake person either captures the snake or confirms it's never there. Joey is doing all right without all of his friends. NBC announced the Friends spinoff will be picked up for the full season. The network ordered at least nine additional episodes starring Matt LeBlanc. You can watch it Thursday nights at 8 right here on NBC 739. The morale may be a little higher on San Diego's newest aircraft carrier this week. Actress Pamela Anderson paid a visit to the carrier USS Ronald Reagan yesterday. She boarded the ship near the end of the workday, but hundreds of sailors stayed late for a chance at an autograph. Anderson came to North Island to promote her new book and clothing line. It is hard to replace what a fire destroys, but tonight some San Diego students do have a bit of their past. Students in Scripps Ranch got new yearbooks tonight. These are students who lost their yearbooks and much more in last year's fires. The school, volunteers, and local businesses pitched in to replicate yearbooks from several schools in Scripps Ranch. The students say they are grateful for this. I'm very thankful that they went ahead and did this for us. It, it gives us a little compensation for like for everything that we lost. And it helps that we have something to look back upon. In all, 750 yearbooks were reproduced for elementary, middle, and high school students. More than 80 games and millions of fans later, Petco Park is no longer a rookie. The new downtown ballpark finished its first regular season today. And by coincidence, the three millionth fan of the season also crossed the gates. There she is. The team beat the old attendance record by almost half a million people. After its first season, we asked fans what they thought of the new ballpark. Qualcomm had better parking as far as being able to tailgate and do things like that. But this is such a special park, it's really nice to come down here, too. Everything's a lot closer, and yeah, I'd say it's much easier to see and to follow it. I love it. Love the ballpark. Very intimate. Uh, best thing San Diego could have done is put this ballpark here. Laz will have highlights from tonight's game coming up in sports. Joe's with us now. A look at the fall weather that may be easing off and not, I don't know, exactly not to summer again, but warmer in a while. Huh? Yeah, I certainly wouldn't break out the bathing suits no. just yet, but <laughs> you might be able to put the sweaters away for a couple of days. We'll take a look at the forecast in detail in a minute and find out just where we're going to wind up in the days ahead. Here's a look at your numbers for tonight. We've got the forecast coming up in just a few minutes. WeatherNet, brought to you by the Giltonen Group, San Diego's leader in luxury real estate. When you buy a suit from us, we'll press it for free at any of our 500 locations. And if you travel a lot, that comes in handy. Lifetime free pressing. Men's Warehouse. You're going to like the way you look. 
I guarantee it. We must pass Proposition 71. As an MD, I took an oath that the very highest priority was the treatment of patients. The chances for diseases to be cured by stem cell research are high, but only if we start. If the promise of stem cell research comes true, we can hope for a single treatment with the right stem cells to cure diseases that every family has. Please join me in voting yes on 71. When you're ready for new flooring, see the people who give you more. More floors, more choices. San Diego Carpet One. At San Diego Carpet One, choose from thousands of floors every day. Come in now during San Diego Carpet One's fall color sale and save on carpet made from Anso Nylon. Designed for fashion, engineered for performance, that's Anso Nylon. Plus, enjoy no payments and interest till 2006. Save more during the fall color sale going on now at San Diego Carpet One. More floors, more choices. San Diego Carpet One. Who could erase our lives? Who could do that? The number one movie in America is The Forgotten. Every memory gone. It's chilling. I remember! The biggest jaw-dropper since The Sixth Sense. The Forgotten. Rated PG-13. Now playing. technology and exceptional values on an Audi A4 at Race to Audi Days. Hurry, the race is on. On the next Jane Pauley show, there's a type of autism that's hard to detect and impossible to cure. It broke my heart. But there is hope from a remarkable source. On the next Jane Pauley show. The Jane Pauley show, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Laz is with us. Um, yeah. Wow. You, you were the uh, ballpark. The fans excited. John Morris had the vision and the money and the patience, and he got it done. Congratulations. But this baseball team, Padres need to win out, and the Giants and Astros and Cubs must all lose their final three games. So it's not likely the Padres oh, are going to the playoffs. To Record fans. Petco crowd, 45,389. Good season, disappointing finish. Game started well enough. Ramon Vasquez led off with a double in the first, came around to score on a Mark Loretta grounder. The only run the Padres got off Jerome Williams, who was making his first start in two months. And just like the first game in the series, Padres had a crummy fourth inning. Giants scored four times with the help of a couple Padres errors, three errors in all in the night. J.T. Snow gave the Giants a 3-1 lead with that two-run double left center off Adam Eaton, who took the loss. His 14 of the year, by the way, so the Padres wasted a leadoff triple in the sixth, a lead double in the seventh. Dustin Hermanson got Rich Aurelia to end the game. Giants are now tied with Idle Houston for the wild card lead. Padres finished the season with three games in Arizona. Yeah, tough night for some fans at the ballpark. I think we'll look at back at some missed opportunities, and, and but we're going to put that behind us, but hopefully learn from them, and uh, even this stretch run and playing in, you know, in a pennant race. It's an invaluable experience, and you only get better from playing in, in one, and uh, I think you know we'll all learn from this. He's exactly right. We, this is the first time for a lot of people in this room to be a part of something like this this time of year, and uh, we're only going to be better from it. Hmm. Dodgers are better. They're at it again. They went extra innings with Colorado. Good play by Colorado's Aaron Miles to extend the, the game in the 11th inning. Didn't matter. 12th inning, David Ross, walk-off homer off Steve Reed. You believe these Dodgers? Time and time again this season, they come up with a big play at the right time. They're three up on the Giants with three games to play against the Giants. Meanwhile, Chicago's Mark Pryor struck out 16, and the Cubs still couldn't win. Adam Dunn set a new single-season strikeout record. In the fourth inning, that's 190 this season, breaking a Barry Bonds record. And this broke the hearts of Cubs fans. Cincinnati's Javier Valentin with the RBI double in the 12th inning to break a one-all tie. Reds take three out of four from the Cubs. The Reds are toast. They have no reason to play. Cubs lose. Cubs lose. 
or a game back of the Astros and Giants with three games left against the Braves. Now for the wild, wild a American League West. Oakland zone. beat Seattle three to two. Another hit for Ichiro Suzuki. He's one shy of George and Sisler's it's single it's season it's hit it's record. But Marty, you and I know yeah. George had only 154 games. Right. So the tied 2 all in the ninth. Bobby Crosby walk off Dinger. Meanwhile, the Angels lost to Texas 6-3. to three. Angels and A's tied for the lead, and they go head-to-head -head for three games starting tomorrow night in Oakland. Three games, one title. Charger fans, Sunday's game officially blacked out locally. There are still more than 12,000 tickets left for Sunday's game against the Tennessee Titans. I'll see you at the queue. In college football, Navy at Air Force. Air Force. Bragging rights on the line between these two. Air Force tied the game late. Sean Kearney hit J.L. Waller for the 12-yard touchdown. Kearney's second touchdown pass of the fourth quarter, 21-all. But with four seconds to play, Navy's Jeff Blumenfield hits the 30-yard field goal to win it. Midshipmen stay undefeated. They're 5-0. Look out, somewhere Army's watching and thinking, how can we ever beat these guys? And a Big East stunner, Connecticut beat Pittsburgh. In basketball, yes, but football, 28-17 the final. I ask, what is happening in college football? <laughs> you know, bomber flying over the stadium does make a point, however. It does get your attention. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Jim. Thank you, Les. Great rivalry. Shows up next with your forecast. The world is on the brink of disaster. On October 15th, three more cities have parted. From the corridors of power to the front lines. He's getting away with the WMD. Comes the motion picture event. Bring it on! That will really make your temperature rise. From the creators of South Park. Hey, terrorists! Terrorize this. Team America, World Police. Only in theaters October 15th. Traction, comfort, trimmed in leather and built to handle any terrain. Introducing the Subaru Forester LL Bean Edition. With its unique blend of rugged capability and impeccable styling, this is one vehicle worthy of the LL Bean name, both inside and out. The Forester and Outback LL Bean Editions from the new Subaru. Visit your Subaru dealer for 2.9% APR for 63 months on every 2005 Subaru. Save three ways at the Robinson's May one-day sale. First, save 25 to 50% store-wide. Second, save more with 15% off entire purchase bonus coupons. And top it off by earning free $10 reward cards. Great savings store-wide. The newest U-Boots. The latest fur fashions. Exciting trenches and toppers. Colorful brooches. Bedding. The most colorful Croco handbags. And early fall sale on ladies' sportswear. Saving money is as easy as one, two, three. Only at Robinson's May. Where every fashion statement ends with an exclamation point. Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. You might need two chairs. You might need an entire room. Either way, it's a win-win situation during Pick a Pair, Pick a Room. Going on now at Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. Prop 68 would expand commercial gambling to non-tribal land, creating huge Las Vegas-sized casinos near 200 schools and traffic-congested freeways in city and suburban neighborhoods. It's supported by card club owners and out-of-state horse racing interests. But 68 is opposed by police, firefighters, educators, and organizations and leaders throughout California. And now Governor Schwarzenegger agrees. Vote no on 68. The more you know about Prop 68, the less you'll like it. We're gonna get you the house with no money down. So go on, ask her. We're approved! We're approved! We're approved! Pinnacle Financial, home of the Stress Less Mortgage. Dial 1-888-CALL-TROY or log on to 888-CALL-TROY.COM and follow the progress of your mortgage approval whenever and wherever you want. No sweat, eh, guys? Found. Feel, feel felt, felt found. found. Yes, in the debate. In the debate. Uh, These are the rules of debating. Well, feel your pain. Joe used to be a debater. Really. It's, it's the feel felt found. I, I understand how you feel. 
I, I probably would have found that myself to be the same way if I was in the same well, situation, I, but I'm sure if you hear what I have to say, <laughs> you'll, you'll see it my way. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Uh, weather for us over the next couple of days looks good. We will warm up a couple of degrees tomorrow, which will be nice, but a little bit warmer for the weekend, which is good, too, but not hot. So all good news. But the bad news is we still are on pace to set the record for the driest consecutive spell without any rain. The last time it rained here was April 17th, 166 days ago. That's not a record we're looking forward to breaking, but at this point there isn't any rain at least the next 10 days, so that gets us awfully close. We are already the second longest dry streak in San Diego. Uh, we set that record yesterday, uh, or actually today, we tied it yesterday. Alrighty, so we need rain. Everybody knows that. Is there any rain in our forecast? It doesn't look like much of anything. There's a lot of marine layers sitting offshore. That's cooler weather that will come rolling onshore, so we'll wind up with clouds for tomorrow morning, but it'll burn off a lot quicker. It's a much shallower marine layer than we have had in the last couple of days. So again, we start off cloudy, probably not much in the way of drizzle. So tonight, clouds, then temperatures drop down just another degree or two. They're not going to go down much more because of the cloud cover. It acts as kind of a blanket. Things clear out during the day tomorrow, and we turn out to be mostly sunny, breezy, and very pleasant, with high temperatures mainly in the upper 60s and a few low 70s here and there for some fairly nice weather. So the upper level low continues to move away. That, that low is sitting over here, so as that moves away, the clouds sort of clear out a little bit. But there is marine layer, still cool air flowing in. So even though the sun will come out tomorrow, it will actually turn out to be a very very, very nice, pleasant day. Let's go live with some weather net sites. We'll take a look around the county, see what's been going on. Up in Carlsbad, a cloudy day. Most of the day today just socked in with the clouds. It took a long time for things to clear out. As far as the temperatures go, it made it up to 73 degrees, and it's still sitting in the 60s right now. Um, up in the mountains, it started out cloudy, but cleared out qu quite quickly in the morning with plenty of sunshine, and then temperatures rebounding a little bit, but still cool. 63 for the high, and it's 49 in Julian right now. And last up on the list, we take it to Ramona, mostly cloudy skies until mid-morning then the sun did make it out and temperatures warmed up a little but even there still below average for this time of the year with a high temperature of just 67 degrees all right so the extended forecast going right through the weekend looks like this again tomorrow uh, more sunshine than clouds which will be nice and about the same thing for saturday with temperatures in the beach areas low 70s warming up a little bit sunday and monday to maybe 73 or 74 if we're lucky the inland areas could get back above 80 degrees for the weekend at least sunday anyway and not very much above it 81 or so and then cooling down again for the middle of next week. So go get your pumpkins and start the carving. Oh <laughs> Come right. on today. Thanks, Joe. You did? Yes. Coming up on the news in the morning, the myths about renter's insurance. How much coverage do you really need at 5 a.m.? Jay Leno is next. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Closed captioning for this newscast is brought to you by Sleep Train Mattress Centers. Your ticket to a better night's sleep. If you're getting married, we'll rent you a tuxedo for as little as 50 bucks which is pretty good, considering her dress probably costs as much as your car. Rent four tuxedos, and the groom's is free. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. Hey, can I try some kicks? Sure. Yeah. <gasps> Oops. Let's eat them. Mm, these kicks are good. Mm-hmm. How come they don't make them different colors? I don't know. No frosting? No. How come they're so good? Kids love kicks because its crunchy corn balls are fun to eat. Moms like kicks because it's...